Hi, Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And in today's video, what I wanna show you is three great budget alternative CPU coolers to the Intel stock cooler. Now, where AMD has been absolutely fantastic over the last 12 months with all their Wraith coolers that they include with their Ryzen processors, and rumor has it that every Ryzen processor, even the X processors, will come with Wraith coolers this year, Intel is still churning out the same old crap. Now, it's not to say this is a bad CPU cooler. I mean, for Pentiums and quad cores, it's sort of okay. You know, it's fine for all older i3s, it works fine. But now we're moving into six cores for the mainstream. This cooler is really starting to struggle. So I've got three budget coolers for you today, which I've decided to go for between a 10 and 25 pound price range. And we're gonna benchmark them all against the Intel stock cooler. I'm gonna show you some installs as well for all of the coolers. Um, and I'm gonna be giving the winning CPU cooler away. So make sure you check that out at the end of the video. While searching for budget CPU coolers priced between 10 and 25 pounds, I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of options available. One thing I quickly noticed at this price range is that you were going to get one of three styles of coolers. Top down low profile, 92mm tower and the odd 120 tower cooler. So I've decided to test one of each style today to see how they perform against Intel's stock thermal solution. For the top down low profile cooler, I decided to go with the Arctic Freezer 11 low profile, which is available from £13 in the UK. It features a 92mm fan with an operational range of 900 to 2000 RPM, dual 6mm copper heat pipes and comes with pre-applied MX4 thermal paste. Installation is a breeze, simply line up the brackets on your motherboard, plug in the push pins and screw in the cooler and you are good to go. Now there were plenty of 92mm tower coolers to choose from but I decided to go with the Deep Cool Ice Blade 200M. The 200M is available from £18 in the UK and features dual 8mm copper heat pipes. For cooling the Ice Blade comes with dual 92mm fans with an operational range of 900 to 2200 RPM. Also in the box are brackets for AM4, X299 and Mainstream Intel. As for installation, this is the easiest cooler you will ever install. The Intel bracket features the same push pins as the Intel stock cooler. Although I am super impressed with this cooler for the price, I do have to make a rather large complaint about this cooler. As I quickly noticed, there was no PWM splitter included for the fans. Upon further investigation, I noticed that the second fan is actually a free pin and has a rather nasty coil one. And I would personally recommend using this cooler with just the PWM fan fitted to the cooler. Moving on to 120 tower coolers then. There aren't many in the £25 price range, but the one that is needs no introduction, the Cooler Master Hyper 212. I've gone for the X variant today, which is available from £25 and features quad 6mm copper heat pipes. The included 120mm fan has an operational range of 600 to 1700 RPM and there are extra brackets in the box for a push-pull setup too. It's really hard to make any complaints about the Hyper 212 range, but if there's one thing that I could complain about it is the mounting system. It's not the hardest I've ever used, but it definitely could do with a refresh. Okay then, over to the test setup. Now this is my Intel rig over here, um, the Gamax Onyx tempered glass case you know it's a typical 2017 case from last year um very limited airflow on the front so i've kept the 320 millimeter fans at the front but i've also got three exhaust fans in the rear as well so i've just kept the rear 120 the top two although the leds are on um the fans are actually turned off i've set it to the asus standard profile we're going to use ida 64 full stress test including memory um, for 30 minutes so we can use that as a benchmark and i've used arctic mx4 thermal paste as well so one thing to note this with some mx4 thermal paste on and in a slightly bigger case as well is going to probably give a little bit better scores than you may well find with your cooler anyway Here's the benchmarks. So moving on to the cooling benchmarks then. In the last place we have the Intel stock cooler. Idle temps were 35 degrees and after 30 minutes of Ida 64, the load results was 67 with a max of 70 degrees. Moving on to the Arctic 11 LP. Idle temps were 32 and when stressed the cooler was at 62 degrees with a max of 67. Although this isn't far off the stock cooler, I should mention that the Freezer 11 cooler was virtually silent throughout the stress test. Next up we have the deep cool ice blade. At idle the 200M was sat at 28 degrees after 30 minutes of stress testing. It had a load of 51 degrees and a max temp of 52 degrees. Well it's no surprise that the Hyper 212 is the winning cooler. Idle temps were 32 degrees but under load this cooler barely broke a sweat. Low temps were at 44 with a max of 47 degrees. 
So there are the benchmark scores then, and the Intel stock cooler did do okay, didn't it? But like I did say, big tower case, three fans in the front, you know, it's not exactly hot at the moment either. And I did change the pace up for Arctic MX4. Now, I know a lot of you in smaller cases, limited airflow, you're gonna to struggle to run this with an 8400. If you've got an i5 8700, you are gonna come into thermal throttling with this CPU cooler. So any of the coolers that we reviewed today are definitely gonna help you out if you've got a six core. But the winner was the Hyper 212X. Um, and if you want to enter the competition to win this, I will announce it at the end of April and ship it early May. There is a competition link in the description below. All you have to do is basically leave me some contact details. If you can put your address there as well so I know where to send it to. I delete all the emails after the competition is won. Um, and please make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. If you like this video, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. And I'll be back with some more videos real soon.